We are following breaking news this afternoon. Arkansas State Police investigating a shooting involving a Department of Community Corrections officer. Now here is what we know right now. It happened this morning on Bankhead Drive near Clinton National Airport. Several agencies, including Little Rock Police, responded to the shooting and assisted. Now we have reached out to the Department of Community Correction for more details about this shooting, but we have not heard back. Thank you so much for joining us here at noon. I'm Hayden Balgavy. That incident that we're following is the very latest in a violent weekend here in central Arkansas. And today we're working to learn more about a pair of deadly shootings in Pine Bluff. Let's start with the one that happened less than 24 hours ago. Officers responded to a home on 17th Avenue and Hazel last night. There they found three teenagers who had been shot, a 14 year old and a 17 year old who died on that scene. An 18 year old was taken to the hospital, but we do not know the extent of their injuries. Right now, detectives are still looking for potential suspects. Police there are also investigating a deadly shooting from Friday. It happened on East Lake Drive. Police tell us they found a person who had been shot and killed and a gun not far from the body. Now one street over, police found another person with a gunshot wound. Investigators believe that person ran through a wooded area between the streets and knocked on a door for help. They were taken to the hospital and treated for non life threatening injuries. We are still working to learn more about both of those shootings and THV 11's Ian Russell will have more on those investigations tonight at five and six. Here in Little Rock, detectives are investigating a deadly shooting from early Saturday morning. It happened at the villas on 65th apartments. Now all we know right now is that one person was shot and later died at the hospital. We're following up with police today for more details about this incident. We'll be sure to share everything we learn here and online at THV11.com. Now to an update to a story we have been following since last night. An inmate who escaped from the Sheridan Detention Center is now back in custody. Police captured Javen Cranford early this morning after multi agents multi agency search rather. Now Cranford escaped from the detention center last night around 830. No word on what he's accused of doing or exactly how he escaped, but he could face additional charges for that escape. All right, let's send it over to meteorologist Nathan Scott. Now, Nathan, another warm, humid day. I arrived to the station this morning and I literally had to turn the wipers on just to get rid of all of that wet, just nastiness. Trying to get in this morning, it's uh, it's hot, it's humid, it's summer. Hayden, there's a lot of moisture in the air from yeah. all the rain we've been receiving and all that moisture is going to make for intense heat. Once again, we're turning to central Arkansas this week. Temperatures out there right now warming up to the upper 80s, already 90 in the capital city. We've got lots of sunshine wall to wall across the state and take a look at the dew points there into the 70s. So you step outside and it's the air that you can wear. So we've got to talk about the heat in the city. It already feels like 97 in the capital city. Feels like 100 in Texarkana. Feels like 94 in Surf City. Heat advisory in effect for South Arkansas and also Prairie County and Monroe County for this afternoon and Northwest Arkansas because those heat indices or what feels like out there will be 105 to 110 and then tomorrow everybody pretty much in central Arkansas is under a heat advisory. That is going to be the story this week. It is going to be brutal heat for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, also into Friday. Then we'll see some changes going into the weekend. I'll let you know if there's any chance of a cooling shower storm out there through the rest of your Monday coming up. Well, as Nathan just said, it is a sizzling summer from coast to coast with severe heat gripping the southern part of the country and torrential rain triggering flash flooding in the northeast. Astrid Martinez has more on this week's extreme weather. Tourists in California's Death Valley snap photos in the desert and next to a thermometer that climbs even higher into the triple digits. We're getting lots of visitors who want to feel what it feels like to live in such an extreme place. Millions of Americans are finding out firsthand with excessive heat blanketing 14 states from the west coast of Florida. Miami issued its first ever excessive heat warning. And Phoenix, Arizona has clocked 17 consecutive days of 110 degrees or more, working on 
on day 18 to tie a 1974 record. The heat feels like when you preheat the oven and you open it up to stick the food in. California is also battling flames, with CAL FIRE warning a single spark could ignite another wildfire there. New York State has issued an air quality health advisory for the city and some surrounding counties through midnight, warning of elevated levels of pollutants. Officials recommend people here limit strenuous activity outdoors. Other parts of the Northeast are underwater. Flash flooding in Pennsylvania has claimed at least five lives over the weekend. And today, officials in Bucks County tripled their resources to find two children still missing. We ask everyone to keep the families of, uh, in their thoughts and prayers during this extremely difficult time. More rain is in the forecast for parts of the Northeast on Tuesday, while the heat dome expands from coast to coast. Astrid Martinez, CBS News, New York. And on top of all that, a tropical storm is also headed toward Hawaii's Big Island. Well, we are not alone in this heat. Scorching weather is gripping two more continents with predictions of historic temperatures taking over parts of Asia and Europe. The high heat is pushing the mercury into near record temperatures with parts of Italy already expected to hit 118 degrees. Meanwhile, Japanese officials are placing tens of millions under a heat advisory this week. The country might break its record high of 106 degrees this week. And one city in Iran had a heat index of 152 degrees, which is well above the threshold considered safe for people and animals. Well, a heads up this afternoon for anyone hitting the road this week. Today marks the beginning of Arkansas's Speeding Slows You Down campaign. State police are reminding drivers that speed limit signs are not suggestions and exceeding those limits is dangerous no matter how experienced of a driver you are. We'll be on the lookout and if you get pulled over for speeding, you can expect to get a ticket. Well, sticking with travel, electric cars and trucks may be better for the environment, but they can also be riskier to other drivers on the road. As Chris Van Cleve found out, their heavy batteries can lead to severe crashes. Crash tests show electric vehicles hold up well in a collision. Their batteries make the cars heavier, offering better protection to passengers inside. But that extra weight, hundreds to even thousands of pounds, comes with some risk. I think it does present significant challenges for safety. National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Homendy. If you think about an impact in a crash with a lighter vehicle, with a pedestrian, it's going to have a much different outcome than we've seen in the past. Terribly tragic. This crash test shows a sedan being hit by an SUV weighing nearly a thousand pounds more. The car suffers noticeably more damage. It's simple laws of physics. Raul Arbelize from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The crash for the other vehicle when you are heavier is going to be more severe. GMC's Hummer EV can go 0 to 60 in roughly 3 seconds while weighing more than 9,000 pounds. Its battery alone is nearly 3,000 pounds, about the same as a Toyota Corolla. The electric F-150 is up to 2,500 pounds heavier than its gas-powered sibling. And Rivian's pickup comes in around 7,100 pounds, while the average vehicle on the road today weighs closer to 4,300. A 7,000-pound vehicle hitting a 4,000-pound SUV, the impact on that smaller vehicle is going to be quite significant. It is going to be a more severe crash with more intrusion and higher levels of injury. A 2011 study found a 1,000-pound difference results in a 47% increase in the likelihood a crash turns deadly. In a statement, the trade group representing the auto industry says safety is a top priority, adding automakers continue to test, develop, and integrate breakthrough safety technologies like automatic emergency braking that help save lives and prevent injuries. Technology already common in EVs. Federal regulators are now moving to require collision avoidance systems in all new vehicles, gas or electric. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Rutgersville, Virginia. Switching to an electric vehicle is something a lot of people are doing these days, especially with these summer gas prices. While they're not near the record high that maybe we saw last year, Nick Charberrier is with AAA and he says prices are still going up. We know that gasoline demand is still high uh, and that could lead to more increases as we head toward the end of summer. If you need gas, get it when you need it rather than waiting for prices to come down. Now some good news, Arkansas has the fifth cheapest statewide average for gas in the country right now. 
When you think of summer, you probably think stress free fun, but that's not always the case. Coming up in two minutes, why all those vacations and celebrations and time with the kids isn't as relaxing as it sounds. Nathan, but look good to jump in that water because it is going to be a hot one out there today. We're talking about intensity throughout the rest of your work week. Also, potential there could be some strong storms in parts of the state later today and tonight. More details on that coming up.